five pounds. Time to get yoked. Oh, yeah, five pounds. Oh. oh, hey there, eighth grade. I didn't see you there. I'm just in my garage gym here, getting a good workout in. What's that? Oh, you want to talk about Andrew Jackson's war against the banks? Well, I guess that's okay. I mean, I'm kind of in the middle of my workout, but... If you guys really want to learn right now, I guess I can teach you a few things. Let's see. So, if we're going to be talking about Andrew Jackson's bank war, we need to understand a few things first. Number one, um, finance and states' rights. So, this is slide number 28. So, oh my gosh. My arms are so pumped right now. Five pound weights are, whoo, it's pretty heavy. It's like, it's like a two, two bags of tortilla chips. That's a lot. It's a lot to curl. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, finance and states rights. After um, Andrew Jackson became president, there was this big emerging debate over the role of the federal government in the national economy and more specifically the role of the separation of power between the federal government and the state government remember that's called federalism aka vertical separation of powers so the constitution expressly gives the federal government a lot of significant powers right it gives powers in articles one through three that are reserved to the federal government. And then the 10th Amendment of the Constitution says that everything that doesn't belong to the federal government belongs to the states. Uh oh, someone's coming. Hold on. Give me a second, I'm waiting for someone to pass. I don't want my sister to know that I'm recording a video right now. She just walked by. Okay, um, so the, uh, where was I? Oh yes, yes. The re-emerging debate over the role of the federal government against the states. So um, one of the questions that this brings up is the role of the national bank, right? So. Um, at first when Andrew, sorry, coming back again. Good. Man, this is a weird video. All right. I just didn't want my sister to come in and interrupt me. She makes fun of me when I make these videos, and I didn't want that to happen. Okay. So <laughs> the reason the role of the National Bank is tied to the question of federalism is because uh, the National Bank starts to become very popular among certain businesses, uh, especially in the North, where um, businesses, Northeast, places like New York and Boston, where there's a lot of big businesses that are relying on loans from the Bank of the United States. So a lot of big businesses start to think the Bank of the United States is actually a pretty good thing. However, in the South, uh, people didn't borrow very much from the Bank of the United States. Instead, people like to borrow from um, their local state banks. And the way the Bank of the United States was set up, it had the power to limit the, the amount of money that these local state banks could loan out to farmers. So businesses really liked the Bank of the United States. Farmers in the South did not. Farmers in the South are um, 
trying to borrow money to buy land or to buy supplies, tools in order to run their farms or to expand their farms. And these state banks are saying, we would like to lend you money, but we can't because the Bank of the United States is not allowing us to do that, right? The Bank of the United States is saying, no, um, money needs to be flowing to businesses first and then farms second. So businessmen like the bank because it loans them money. Uh, It's a safe place for businessmen to keep their money. Um, And then also it issues a lot of paper money, pumps paper money into the economy, which kind of regulates uh, economic health, right? Um, The reasons the National Bank was unpopular is because it prevents these state banks from loaning money. Farmers and merchants rely on state banks, not the Bank of the United States. People from the South and West who want to buy land, who want to uh, continue to expand the western border of the United States farther and farther west, they want to acquire more and more land. And in order to do that, they have to be able to, they have to be able to borrow money from the state banks, and they can't. So it looks to people like the Bank of the United States benefits the big wealthy businessmen and it hurts the poor and it hurts the middle class, right? So Andrew Jackson, of course, we know about him. He comes from poverty and he kind of pulled himself up by his own bootstraps, so to speak. He's uh, very popular among the poor, among the middle class, among the South, among farmers, right? He hates the Bank of the United States. He gives it a nickname. He calls it the monster. And he says his job as president is to kill this monster before it kills him, right? So Jackson believes, like a lot of people do, that this Bank of the United States unfairly benefits the wealthy. And he also accuses the Bank of the United States of being corrupt, right? The president of the bank is a guy named Nicholas Biddle. And I have his picture there on slide 29. Biddle makes a lot of deals with people in Congress, right? And... um, In 1832, so the bank still has four years left on its charter, uh, so it's going to expire in the year 1836, and then the Bank of the United States is going to disappear. Well, a lot of people don't want the Bank of the United States to disappear, especially the president of the bank, Nicholas Biddle. So in 1832, he makes a lot of deals with people in Congress, and he uses his power and his influence to try to get people in Congress to vote to extend the charter of the bank. So the bank will live on beyond the year 1836. Well, Andrew Jackson finds out about this when he's on his when he's really sick, and this kind of rouses him from his sick bed. He says he's going to kill the monster, and he uses his veto power to kill the bill. Right now, 1832 is also an election year, so this is a major political issue. In fact, it's the most important issue of the election of 1832 when Andrew Jackson runs against his old enemy, Henry Clay. So Henry Clay is a big supporter of the bank. He thinks it's an important part of the economy because it supports a lot of big businesses. Andrew Jackson is using this kind of popular wave he's riding on to oppose the bank. Um, So because the electorate has expanded. Remember, Andrew Jackson expanded the amount of people who would be able to vote in elections, or he pressured Congress and the states to do this, right? Most people in the country are not wealthy businessmen. They're more like poor farmers and merchants and middle-class people. They oppose the bank, therefore they support Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson wins his second term in office by a huge margin. Henry Clay gets absolutely stomped Uh, The bank's charter is not renewed, and in 1836, the bank dies when its charter expires. Congratulations, Andrew Jackson, you won. All right, so we're going to stop there, um, and then we'll pick up in another video with federalism. Now I need to go back to doing my workouts. Yeah! All right, bye.